The United States came out of World War II high off the fumes of industry with one of the most advanced aircraft ever built, the B-29. But based on the design of the B-29's successor, military industrialism wasn't the only thing America was high on. We have to make it bigger and, and, make, and give, it, give it six engines and put them on backwards. The B-36 was constructed as a super long-range bomber that would be able to reach mainland Japan non-stop from the United States. The first one flew in August 1946, successfully missing the entire war. But while the Empire of Japan would be spared, another country would find itself the victim of the B-36's dreaded bomb. Canada. But that's a story for later. The United States found itself in a new conflict with a new enemy who was the correct distance away for the B-36 to be useful. Communism. Capitalism. No. Communism. Capitalism. Communism. Imperialism? <laughs> 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 First thing you might notice about the B-36 is its size. It's really big because unlike the B-29, it was built specifically to carry heavy nuclear weapons. Hence why it was named the Peacemaker, as it was designed to peacefully fly over to other countries and glass their cities. It had long, thick, luscious, sausage-like wings and six colossal piston engines allowing it to outclimb most interceptors. These engines often had trouble keeping their combustion internal, because ice had a tendency to build up and block the airflow at the front, causing fuel to build up and eventually... Luckily, these engine failures on this plane carrying nuclear weapons never caused any major issues. Except for that one time when a B-36 lost three engines to fire and had to drop its payload, and then crashed into a mountain in Canada. You might take one look at this and say, I couldn't possibly make it any worse. And you're right, because the Air Force did my job for me by making modifications far worse than anything I could ever come up with. Worse than most things I could ever come up with. We have to put jet engines on it, so it goes faster. The first thing they did was decide that six engines wasn't enough, so they frantically searched around the pile of new technology they had just captured from the Germans and found these things called jet engines. With this new increase in speed, not only could the crew use it to dash more quickly over targets, but they could also come home faster. Look what they've done. New York is gone. Washington is gone. And now they've turned Ohio into a stinking radioactive wasteland. No, this is just how Ohio always looked. What? Didn't you grow up here? Yeah. No wonder you were always so depressed. Yeah. Yes! More challenges! <laughs> I didn't actually bother to do any research, and I don't know where else to take this section, so have this instead. I will not be taking any questions. <laughs> so what if the fighters don't have long enough range? Well, why can't the fighters just go inside? 
outside! It can carry its own escorts with it! While flying at 50,000 feet was pretty impressive, it became very clear very quickly that sending a mansion-sized plane on a bombing mission alone was like wearing a fursuit in a hunting zone. No matter how many turrets you stick on it, it is begging to be shot down. While the B-36 had an extremely long range of 16,000 kilometers, fighters would have to turn back far before that, leaving the bomber to fly on alone. Then some genius came up with a plan to have the B-36 carry its escorts with it. This would require a fighter jet small enough to fit inside its bomb base. And so the XF-85 Goblin <laughs> was created for the task. <laughs> The airborne potato, sadly, was never put into service. <laughs> While the B-36's range was already extreme, somebody somewhere decided that it needed an even longer range. To achieve this, it would need a new propulsion system. Something safe, something practical, and most important- It was the 50s, and nuclear was the new hip way of powering things. Everything from power plants, ships, toasters. Evidently, the idea of a nuclear plane that wouldn't be limited by fuel was too promising not to try, so they modified a B-36 to carry a nuclear reactor. The reactor wasn't actually powering the engines, they just wanted to see if it had enough lift to carry the thing. Which it could. Which shouldn't surprise anybody, because the wings look like sausages, they're so chunky! Some people insinuated that putting a functioning nuclear reactor on a plane known for violent engine fires and crashes would maybe possibly have a small chance of perhaps being a bad idea. Crews also probably weren't very keen on the idea, as they had to sit in an enclosed lead container in order to not get ionized. Needless to say, this idea didn't go very far. <laughs> Somebody had the bright idea of sticking two B-47s on the B-36's wingtips for range extension or something. So here, I made it. You see that frame counter? I'm keeping that open, so you feel bad for what you make me go through. I'm talking to myself, by the way. I did this to myself. Anyway. Super maneuverability is a feature that some planes have which lets them keep control even after they've stalled, allowing for maneuvers like this. Or in simpler terms, remember when the bad guy in Top Gun Maverick went like... Oh, guess what? I can do that too! Watch this! Pretty cool, right? Now, I know that a B-36 doesn't have the exact same body shape as an Su-27, but that's nothing a little thrust vectoring can't fix. Okay, this isn't exactly what I was going for, but I'd call it a success. You know what the plane that's famous for engine fires needs? Even more moving parts and complexity. I had to load this thing in with cheats because it was way too heavy and kept breaking its own landing gear. Also, a smarter person would have probably taken off the propellers. But it's too late for that now, let's go! Am I doing this right? So, 
How have you guys been doing? I don't know why I'm talking to you like I know you personally, because I don't. <laughs> I'm trying to use the thrust vectoring to level off. Alright, one kilometer per second. I think we can start pulling up. If you're wondering why the engines have funny rainbow effects, it's because I tried editing the texture of the exhaust. It didn't really work. I think we might make it. The minimum we need is 70,000. I am running out of liquid fuel faster than I'd like. Where are we at? Okay, that's enough. 80,000. That's enough. That's... And just let it glide. <coughs> Why did I do that? I didn't mean for this to look cool, but I think it looks pretty cool. Well, I didn't have enough fuel. Ah, I was so close to. I should probably prepare for that exam I have in a week. While the B-36 was making its way through its brief time in service, some considered it to be obsolete on arrival. Because there was already a younger, faster cousin heralding the age of the jet. <laughs> <laughs> 